there, this is Brittany from Just Be Crafty. Today we're going to learn how to make the crochet moss stitch dishcloth. For the written pattern and complete list of materials, please see the link that goes directly to my blog post in the description box below. This dishcloth is super simple in construction. It's a square crocheted in moss stitch with a reverse single crochet border. I'm going to walk you through step by step on how to make one of these yourself, but first, I want to take the time to invite you to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already and to hit the bell so that you never miss a new tutorial. I share new pattern tutorials on Tuesdays and new stitch techniques every Friday, so you definitely don't want to miss out. And now, with all that out of the way, let's go ahead and get started. Grab your yarn and crochet hook. I am using a 5.5 millimeter hook, and I'll have the exact materials I'm using linked in the description box below. So we're going to start by doing a slip knot, and then we're going to begin by chaining 36. And if you are still having issues with slip knots and chaining, I will have a video linked in the description box below that shows you exactly how to do that. So if you'd like, go ahead and pause here and meet back up with me once you have 36 chains. Okay, so we have our foundation chain of 36, and we're going to be actually working our first row into the back bars of our foundation chain. So rotate your foundation chain to expose the back of it, and we're going to start by placing a single crochet into the fourth chain from our hook. You're going to chain one, skip a chain, and single crochet into that next chain. Chain one, skip a chain, and single crochet into that next chain. And if you prefer to not work into the back bar of your foundation chain, that's no problem. You can work into your foundation chain as normal. I just like the edge that it creates when we start our first row into the back bar rather than into the side of a foundation chain like we normally would for a project. So you just keep repeating this process across the row. You'll single crochet, chain one, skip a chain, and single crochet into that next chain. So if you'd like, go ahead, pause here, and meet back up with me once you complete your first row. Okay, so now we're almost to the end of the row, and I'm just placing my last single crochet into the very last chain. And this completes row one. So now we can turn our work and begin row two. To begin row two, we'll start by chaining two, and we're going to place our first single crochet into the chain one space. So single crochet into that chain one space, chain one, and single crochet into the next chain one space. Chain one, single crochet into the next chain one space. Keep repeating this process until you get to the end of the row. We're going to be single crocheting into each of the chain one spaces with a chain one in between. If you'd like, pause here and meet back up with me once you get to the end of the row. We're just about at the end of the row and I'm ready to place my last single crochet. My last single crochet is going to go into the chain two space, the starting chain two space from the previous row. So now we turn our work and we'll just be repeating row two from here on out. So we start with our chain two, and then we single crochet into the next chain one space. Chain one, and we'll single crochet into the next chain one space. You'll keep repeating this process until your piece from the starting edge measures to be eight and a half inches or the width of your project. So the width of my project was approximately eight and a half inches. So I crochet up in moss stitch rows until my piece measures to be about eight and a half inches. So that way I create a perfect square. Your measurements might be a little bit different from mine. Mm -hmm. 
Flashing forward to the last stitch of row 3, just to show you again, your last single crochet will go into the starting chain 2 space from the previous row. So if you'd like, go ahead, pause here, and meet back up with me once your piece measures to be approximately 8.5 inches from your starting edge. I'm just finishing up my last row. My piece is measuring at about 8.5 inches from my starting edge, and this was 34 total rows for me. And again, if this is different for you, that's totally fine. So now we're ready to do a border, a border round of single crochet. So we've just done our last stitch and now you'll chain one. And we're going to just work single crochets in every stitch and chain one space across the top row. So I'm just making single crochets into every single crochet and chain one stitch across the row. Okay, so I've reached my last, or I'm just about reaching my last stitch, which will go into the chain two, starting chain two space from my previous row, and that is a corner stitch. So I'm going to work a single crochet followed by a chain two and another single crochet into that same stitch. So now we will turn, rotate our work so the side is facing up. We're going to work 32 stitches along this side edge. So this does not have to be perfect. Um, it will, since I did 34 rows and I'm working 32 stitches across, each stitch will not necessarily be lined up with the row. So what might be helpful to make sure that you get those 32 stitches single crocheted evenly along this edge, you could always place a stitch marker marking the very center. And so you would do 16 single crochets up to the stitch marker and then just make sure you have 16 single crochets after the stitch marker. And remember, you would want to count your um, corner stitches into those stitch counts. So go ahead and pause here and meet back up with me once you get your 32 stitches along the side of your dishcloth. And if you decided to make your dishcloth shorter or smaller, your stitch count will be a little bit different. But you just want to do enough single crochets to make it so that it creates an even square that lays pretty flat. Okay, so now I'm at my next corner, and so this will be my 32nd stitch. And so I place my single crochet into that corner stitch. Now I'll chain two and place a single crochet into that same stitch. So now we're working along the bottom of our work. So you're going to single crochet into each of our foundation chains along the bottom row. Okay, so we've just worked our way to the next corner and we're placing a single crochet followed by a chain two and another single crochet. And now we're ready to work our next side. So you'll do that in the same fashion that you just did previously. So if you'd like, go ahead, pause here, and meet back up with me once you have completed this side. All right, so I'm almost done completing my following side and now I'm ready to make my last single crochet. Our last single crochet is going to go into the same space that we placed our first single crochet of the round and we're going to end by chaining two and joining with the first stitch of the round using a slip stitch. All right, so now that we have cleaned up all of our edges with our single crochet border, we're ready to add on our final touch, um, a little, um, little pretty edging detail. So we're going for that detail, we are going to use a reverse single crochet. Reverse single crochet is a little bit weird, but it's just as the name implies, we're actually going to be working our stitches in reverse. So traditional crochet, we work from right to left, and in this scenario, we are going to be working from left to right. So to begin, chain one. We are going to make our first stitch into the chain two space that's to the right of our chain one. 
So insert your hook into that chain two space, grab your working yarn, draw up a loop, yarn over, pull through the first two loops. That is reverse single crochet. So now we're going to chain two because this is our corner stitch and you're going to insert your hook into that same chain two space, draw up a loop, yarn over, pull through the two loops on your hook. So now into the next stitch, we're done with our corner, you're going to insert your hook, draw up a loop, yarn over, and pull through two loops. And that's it, that's all you have to do. Um, one thing that is a little bit tricky with this stitch is that it's a little bit tricky to get the right tension. If you make your stitches too tight, you won't see this bubbled up detail that the reverse single crochet makes. You want to make sure that you do your stitches fairly loose. And if you find that you're making these stitches too tight, I suggest to go up a crochet hook size or two just so you're using a larger hook and then you can see this detail a little bit more. So for reverse single crochet, you insert your hook into the stitch to the next stitch to the right, draw up a loop, yarn over, pull through two loops on your hook. And what I find helps with this, I use my left hand to kind of pull on my work to pull it out of the way as I make my reverse single crochet. I find that this gives me the best look and it doesn't jumble all of my stitches on top of each other. Keep repeating this process until you get all the way around your work. And just remember in each corner you do a reverse single crochet followed by a chain two and another reverse single crochet into the same corner stitch. So if you'd like, pause here and meet back up with me once you reach the end of your round. I'm almost at the end of my round. I'm just finishing up my last two reverse single crochets. I'm making my last one right now. And now we're ready to join our work in the round by using a slip stitch. So to do that, I'm going to flip my work and I'm just going to insert my hook into the next stitch and make a slip stitch. So at this point, we can cut our yarn and you can secure your tail. And then just draw your tail through the loop on your hook and pull tight to secure. You might have to use your fingers to adjust your reverse single crochet border a little bit to make it look a little bit more even. And if you notice that your piece just doesn't look like it's laying evenly or laying completely flat, I suggest to wet block it. Mine was the same way, and um, trust me, after you wet block it, you will not be sorry. I have instructions on how I wet blocked my dishcloths over on my blog, so you'll want to go ahead and check that out. Now it's time to weave in our ends, and I did this before blocking. So you want to take your yarn needle, thread it, and pick the row that, just pick a row of crochet that's near your tail, and just weave your tail into the row. So just weave your little yarn needle into your stitches along the same row. And then once you feel like you've gone down long enough, then you'll work your way back up in the reverse way. So just make sure that when you go back up the reverse way, don't go back into the same stitch you just weave your needle out of or otherwise you'll just unravel what you just weaved in. So just go back and forth along that same row in that same spot until you feel that your end is sufficiently weaved in. And then once you're at that point, you can cut your tail and just repeat this process for any other tails you may have. Okay, so I feel like I've sufficiently weaved in my tail and now I can just go ahead and snip it. Kind of adjust it a little bit with my fingers, make sure you can't see it at all. Now I'm just ready to wet block and then I'm completely done. So once again, if you'd like to check that out, I will have the link to my blog post where I talk about how to wet block in the description box below. And so that's it. I really hope you found this tutorial helpful. If you did, let me know by giving the video a thumbs up. And if you haven't already and would like to, be sure to subscribe to my channel so you never miss a new tutorial. 
I come out with new pattern tutorials on Tuesdays and new stitch techniques on Fridays. So you definitely don't want to miss out. I would love to have you. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.